we've got a couple of items that uh, are on the Rat Tone City Commission agenda for uh, Tuesday, September 8th. Can you kind of explain those to the customer so that we can understand just exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish on this one? Well, what we're trying to do, Marty, is establish a ceiling as to the amount of kilowatt hours that RPS will reimburse in the future on new solar installations. And we want to peg that seating, ceiling at 10,000 kilowatt hours a year or 833 kilowatt hours a month. Uh, the reason we're doing that is uh, RPS is a business and uh, we are suffering through declining revenues, declining load, declining customers. Uh, and uh, that's one factor. Another factor is a majority of our customers, uh, residential customers, use a lot less than 833 kilowatt hours a month on the average. Uh, we certainly do at my house. Uh, and uh, uh, the majority of our customers can't afford to in install solar. It's expensive. And uh, if we continue uh, with, our, with our present policy, uh, we, we're in a situation where our average low-income customer may be subsidizing uh, somebody who uh, generates a whole lot more of a solar than they use. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to we want to cap the maximum reimbursement we'll do uh, at that 10,000 kilowatt hours a year figure. Now for anybody who at the end of the true up at the end of their year uh, is you know their average usage has been and those are future customers we're talking about not present customers. So you will grandfather present solar customers in? Uh, yeah, we have solar. binding contracts with the 17, 18 people we've got now that are using solar. And, uh, you know, we'll honor them. We're looking toward the future, though. We want to make a change and say that in the future, uh, the maximum we will reimburse on the annual true-up uh, is the equivalent of 10,000 kilowatt hours. Have you seen many of the solar panels, uh, the people who have solar panels in the system now, uh, go over 10, 10 kW? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we have many that, uh, well, I'm, I'm just calculating the monthly bills right now before we did this interview, and I just, uh, I just processed one that uh, uh, put RPS in the hole, uh, you know, almost 5,000 kilowatt hours for one month. Uh, and at the end of the true up year, we will, we will owe that customer a significant amount of money under the contract we have with them. Our purpose in this ordinance is, is to not get into that situation where we, we are paying somebody for thousands of kilowatt hours more that they generate uh, and put into our system than, than we supply them. We want to cap that uh, at the equivalent of 833 kilowatt hours a month. But that, this, uh, this policy is moving forward. You know, that's critical information that somebody uh, is, is going to need to know before they design a solar system. Yeah. That policy is consistent with uh, the policy of the city of Farmington. Uh, Farmington Electric Utility System, which is the largest municipally owned uh, electric utility right. in the state. Uh, we want to we wanna comply with federal law. Uh, we are not regulated by the PRC or by any other uh, state agency. We are only responsible to comply with federal law. And we, we adopted Farmington's ceiling mm -hmm. Uh, because if, uh, if we do have in the future uh, somebody uh, filing a claim in federal court, uh, f what they perceive to be an unfair practice, you know, we would we'd be able to say, well, the largest electric utility in the state is using that standard. Right. 
Now, uh, they've all, everybody, especially the politicians, have been talking that that green side of things to where they want the utilities to have X number of uh, kilowatt hours or X percentage come from uh, renewable energy. Does RPS fall under that uh, as well? Uh, well, you're talking about the clean power plan, right? Right. Okay, the clean power plan was promulgated by the Obama administration, EPA. Uh, it was put out on August 3rd, uh, you know, of this year. And it won't be in the federal regulations till about uh, October 3rd. Uh, what that system does is the EPA has analyzed all 50 states, well, not Alaska and Hawaii, uh, the 48 continental states. And they have established a s emission ceiling that uh, it's a three-step process. Uh, first step is in 2022 to 2024. The second step is in 2025 to 2027. Third steps in 2029. And then there's a final level that they have to meet. It's a ramp down type thing that they have to meet in 2030. Uh, the state of New Mexico is under that. The state of New Mexico, no doubt, will, uh, uh, you know, on the power plant that we are now pursuing, will include the, the emissions from our power plant within those totals. Uh, so it's a, it, if the feds are establishing the target numbers that ramp down over time, and the state governments have to comply with those. Now, at this moment, 17 or 18 states have filed suit over those numbers. New Mexico has not, because New Mexico is in a pretty good situation on the table uh, due to the situation with the Four Corners uh, plant uh, and the uh, San Juan Generating Station plant in Farmington. It, it happens that, it, that the state's plans to ramp down those, those plants put them in a pretty good position to comply with these standards. So uh, as far as generating capacity, and that's what we're talking about, we're talking about the clean power plan, we're talking about the state of New Mexico's number they have to meet to comply with the EPA standards. Uh, you know, and that's, that's the summation of what that law is all about. Right. Now how that, ratchets back to our 833 a month ceiling for solar, uh, you, you know, that, that, that is a long ways away from what the, the EPA is doing. Okay. The other item on the agenda has to do with the uh, Wardzilla power plant. <laughs> our, our, our favorite... Our favorite, favorite topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, our favorite topic or money pit, as one might call it. Um, Kind of explain, now that we've gotten the agreement with the uh, insurance company, from what I understand, this, the next step is to basically join them as far as collecting from Wardzilla on kind of a, a warranty, would, would we call it a warranty type situation? Or? Well, it, it, it's called subrogation. And uh, I've been involved in lots of legal activities over my career, but I've never been involved in the subrogation. But the way it works, uh, if all things go according to the documents that have already been approved, the city will get $6.25 million that will be dedicated to a replacement generator and engine uh, in the, that will be installed at the current Wartzilla site. Uh, so the city's happy. We, we, our insurance company is going to pay us uh, the, the full policy value. Uh, what we are doing now is our insurance company wants us to work with them on their lawsuit, a subrogation claim against Wartzilla, because they want to get as much money back from Wartzilla as they can. And in exchange for our participation, we get a small percentage of whatever that future award in the subrogation lawsuit settlement might be. But the documents before the city commission tonight, there's two documents uh, <coughs> dealing with uh, subrogation. One is 
uh, to hire attorneys, which uh, we'll be uh, looking at a firm out of uh, Dallas. Uh, the lawyer that will be the main attorney on this is a fellow named Raggy Dunn. And the second agreement involves the actual proration uh, of the future settlement. But for us, we've already won that game. Uh, all we have to do, we're in the bidding process now where we're awarding a new engine and uh, our, our settlement agreement uh, with, the insur with our insurance company says after 30 days of that award, they will give us the last installment of our money. So at that point, we'll get $6.25 million. Now, the, the agreements before the City Commission tonight are simply to allow us to participate in the subrogation action as a very, very minor party. Uh, you, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to estimate what we'll get out of it, but uh, there's, a, there's a formula in there that has got so many contingencies associated to it, there's no way I would try to explain it on camera. But the point is, is that uh, we're partnering with our insurance company to help them be made whole uh, because they have made us whole. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan.